We welcome you into the Cross Country Mortgage Campus in Berea, Ohio, home of the Cleveland Browns, episode 15 of the best podcast available, presented by Cross Country Mortgage. I'm Jason Gibbs alongside Andrew Gribble. Coming up in just a few minutes, you'll hear from Nathan Zagura and Browns offensive coordinator Alex Van Pelt on what he's seen through the Browns offense here through the first two weeks of OTAs. And, of course, through the off-season workouts. Gribs, uh, the big news of the week. In addition to week two of OTAs officially being in the books, the Browns uh, signing tight end David Njoku to a five-year extension through 2025. The 25-year-old, uh, 148 career receptions, over 1,700 yards, 15 touchdowns. Uh, had a really good year last year. The Browns reward that. And the potential, again, that they continue to see in him is verified here by the contract extension. Yeah, definitely a very forward-thinking contract, and I think the, of all those numbers you just rattled off, the big one is that he's only 25. And I think some of the best tight ends in the league right now, a Travis Kelsey uh, and guys like that, they're in their 30s. I mean, this is a position where you truly do grow into it. And I think when you heard from him uh, at the press conference, he talked about kind of the love he has for for blocking now and, and, and that kind of becoming a complete tight end. And then it's hard to avoid this, but you you wonder it's it's what does he become in an offense with Deshaun Watson at quarterback, and clearly as the number one option. I, I think it's it's like when you see plays like the one he made against the Chargers last year, the seventy five yard touchdown catch. It's like how do you get the guy the ball more? And I think that's going to be something that you think about. Like how do you get him as a as a regular in your passing game more consistently uh, than the team has done in the past? Saying you've seen the flashes, and I think now it's it's making a, a more consistent thing. Where early in his career he might have been a liability as a blocker. I don't think he is that anymore. Uh, and now you can get him fully involved in the offense and not really splitting time with with guys like Hooper and Bryant out there. Yeah, you mentioned it. Alex Van Pelt talked about it in his press conference earlier in the week about how impressed he's been with Njoku embracing that blocking tight end role, but now he becomes really a primary uh, ball catcher for this football team uh, with a young wide receiver room and a new quarterback in Deshaun Watson. Some real opportunities here going to happen in the passing game for David Njoku. Yeah, and he's clearly the most talented and arguably maybe the most productive tight end that Deshaun Watson's gotten to work with. And Deshaun's gotten some great production of guys like Darren Fells went over from Cleveland to there and then had one of his best seasons of, of his entire career. So uh, a guy that can become a, a quarterback's best friend and, and someone that you know, Najoku is someone who will be matched up with linebackers and things like that, and, and Deshaun can extend some plays, and you want to see what Najoku can do on, on those kind of plays and, and make some some special plays happen. It's just a guy that has that that size in the red zone, the speed in the open field, everything you want in that tight end position. You just want to see him getting the ball more and making those catches on a, on a more consistent basis. But I think last year you saw it in spurts. I mean, that was you saw some of the best plays of, of David Njoku's career last year. Yeah, the, the sky is the limit. The 25-year-old, again, a five-year extension that will take him through uh, 2025. So happy to see it get done. And, again, the primary reason that you – put the franchise tag on a player is to buy you a little more time to to negotiate a deal like this yeah and it's it's one of those where we saw a bunch of tight ends get the franchise tag and it's it, i think this is a a contract that will kind of show you where the market is going for tight ends because there's just it's a it's a supply issue right now there's not a lot of guys uh out there and there's a lot of teams that want to play two or three tight ends and, and you got to get these guys uh on on, on the team and you want to keep the good ones that you have so i think david's contract wherever it ranks him now in the league, he's probably going to move down a few spots because there's probably going to, there's probably going to be an explosion in this market. There's guys like Darren Waller out there who's set for for a big for a big payday and and guys like the 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 salaries are going to keep getting higher and higher. I think the guy the name's escaping me, but the Panthers signed a tight end this this offseason that I'd frankly never heard of and it was to, <laughs> it was at a number of like 7 or 8 million a year and and it's so it that's that's where this market is going uh right now for a position where there's just not a lot of of players that can do it. Week two of OTAs officially in the books. Uh, Miles Garrett addressed the media. Uh, David Njoku addressed the media. And our three coordinators, Mike Prefer, special teams coordinator, uh, offensive coordinator Alex Van Pelt, defensive coordinator Joe Woods uh, uh, addressed uh, the media all on Wednesday. Mike Prefer, the trade that positioned uh, the Browns to take Cade York, left him with tears streaming down his face. I think might be one of the biggest takeaways from the day, but the coordinators all seem to be in a pretty good place with where this team is so far. Yeah, you know, honestly, I thought I'd be weird bringing this up, but I thought Prefer's press conference was the most revealing of the, of the three in terms of 
he feels really good about maybe his two most important positions in a way that we've not heard him speak where it's got his guy at kicker and Cade York and he's got his guy at returner and, and Jakeem Grant who I think that we haven't talked about him a ton this offseason but there's some really high expectations for him and he has some really high expectations for himself because he thinks he can put up some some big numbers and, and big return numbers and put this Give, give this group a consistent threat, not only in you, you know he can catch the ball and, and hold on to it, but he can make big plays. And I think that's something this team has sorely lacked really for years now. And I think if you can ha- have him back there as a consistent threat, it can really take the, the, the special teams to another level. So Prefer, it just seems like, is in maybe the best place in terms of feeling good about the guys he's got in the, in the most key spots right now. The one position group that I think as we get closer to training camp that's going to be the most fascinating to watch would be at the cornerback position. And MJ Emerson, Greedy Williams, Greg Newsom. uh, Denzel Ward, who's going to play where? Who's going to get the playing time? Uh, Joe Woods said that there is a place on this team for Greedy Williams, who's had an outstanding offseason. MJ Emerson gives them uh, a lot of flexibility. And then does Newsom play inside or outside? This is quickly becoming the position, uh, one of the few positions, I think, on this team that are – really going to be scrutinized as we get into camp. Yeah, and it's just, Newsom is is probably the front runner for that slot position because he's got the experience there. He got cross-trained there last year, had to play at some last year as well. And then you look at the other options and you're like, haven't played much slot. And so you, you start to deduce that that's maybe the, the role that this is going. And then the fact that Greedy is coming off his best year with the Browns and I think has done everything right uh, going into his fourth year with the team. I mean, he's someone that should be viewed as a legitimate threat to be starting out there. And I think he's someone that, remember, a second-round pick, super talented guy, got bit by the injury bug early in his career, but played in all but one game last year. And I think he was someone that that really played solid football for this team and, and really stepped up when they needed it when there was a bunch of injuries to that position. Uh, the defense, speaking of that, a little bonding time coming for the defense. The offense went to the Bahamas a few weeks ago. We did not get the invite, nor did we get the invite for the defense and the defensive trip to South Beach, uh, led by Miles Garrett. Uh, the defense getting away and getting some team bonding in here this weekend. Yeah, it'll be interesting. You don't see these too often with defensive players. You see it with like with what Deshaun did with the offense. You see that all the time around the league. This one, I'm just curious to see what it even looks like. What are the what what kind of drills are they doing? Do yeah. they bring in a, a dummy offense to to put them through some some kind of situations? That that is what I'm most curious about. Do they do they recruit some high school players or or anything like that to run them through some situations? Offense, you you see running against air a lot. You don't see the defense running against air all that often. So I'm I'm curious to see how this looks. Maybe we'll see some cell phone videos leaked of, of this kind of stuff. And I can tell you the offense, while we watched them on the golf course and a few other pictures, uh, they really did get in some quality work down in the Bahamas. I would expect with Miles Garrett leading the charge – that will continue for the defense. They'll find a way to make this work. Yeah, it's going to be warm, and it's going to be good to get that group back together. And it's it's a group that a lot of returning players, a lot of familiarity uh, on that defense, and especially with Clowney coming back as well, it's good to see that group back together. And I think they've got high expectations after how they finished last season. All right, week two of OTAs in the book. We have one more week of OTAs, four practices next week, and then three days mandatory minicamp, and then we're dismissed for summer vacation. And next stop is training camp 2022. Offensively, this is a passing camp per Alex Van Pelt. He said by the time this is all said and done, 350 passes versus live reps. Not too shabby. For more on how the offense has progressed this offseason, Alex Van Pelt just sits down with Nathan Zagura. Have a watch and have a listen. Here with Brown's offensive coordinator, Alex Van Pelt, and coach, two weeks of the OTAs now in the books. How's this offense coming along? Still growing. That's the good news. You know, we've had good days. We've had some rough days. Um, you know, for the quarterback room, it's all new stuff. Um, the, the, the most encouraging part is we don't make the same mistakes twice. So now this is the second time we've gone through these installations. We should be getting better, and it shows today. You talked about it in your press conference. This is a passing camp. You want to get maybe 350 reps on defense. Well, guess what? We have a pretty good back seven. So are you getting a lot of good looks and a lot of good work against good competition? Oh, there's no question. That, that back end for those guys, I mean, they're, they're talented. They're really four deep at corner, even more. The safety play is exceptional. Um, their disguise has is, is been really good so far in these OTAs, and it's a challenge for the quarterback room. 
All right, let's talk about Deshaun. What have you seen from here, here in these first two weeks of OTAs? Uh, very impressive. I mean, his skill set's uh, phenomenal. I mean, he can make every throw on the field from all different body positions. It's fun to watch. His accuracy stands out. Um, you know, the, the arm strength is another uh, characteristic that you're like, wow, I, you know, he, he can he can put it in the windows that close quickly. So that's really good. So just getting him um, to catch up and learn as quickly as he can. But um, when he when he sees it and he fires it, it's it's pretty. And it feels like it's quick. Once he makes the decision to throw it, it's not a lot of body motion. It feels like it comes out very quickly. It comes out quick with a great velocity. So those windows, they, they have a hard time closing on his balls. You talked about he reminded you in some ways of Aaron Rodgers. Mm -hmm. In what ways were those? Uh, his mobility, I think, his ability to, to, to make plays outside the pocket and throw off platform. Um, you know, quarterbacks should be able to make plays when, when everything's perfect at this level. Uh, it's when things break down that we have to be great. And I think there's a lot of characteristics of Aaron and, and Deshaun's game when things break down. One thing I've noticed, and I've talked to some other people out here, it feels like the middle of the field is back, that we're throwing the ball to the middle of the field, attacking it much more than perhaps we have in the past. What does that do for the offense? Well, you know, you got to defend the whole field at that point. So you're not just working outside the numbers. you got to defend the whole field. That makes us a better offense. What's kind of the evolution you want to see, given the skill set? You mentioned the mobility that he brings to the table. How does that evolve this offense? Uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to extend plays. You know, that's one of the areas we've talked about as a group is we're going to be out of the pocket more than we ever have. So our scramble opportunities, when we get out there, we have to make them explosive gains. So we've worked really hard um, with the whole group of what happens when we do extend plays. Jacoby Brissett's a guy who's quarterbacked a lot in this league. He started for multiple teams. When you have a backup like that, and you guys had a great one with Case Keenum as well. What does that do for the offense, and how has he looked so far? He's looked really good. He has a great understanding of one protection, scheme, um, everything we're implementing. You can see it. Uh, he's definitely banked a lot of reps, uh, has a ton of starts in the NFL, and there's not a lot that surprises him. So to have a security blanket like that uh, that's played a lot of football is good. You've been around a lot of great receivers, and Amari Cooper is the latest in that long line for you. What do you think about his route running, what he's shown so far? A tremendous route runner. He's a savvy guy. Uh, the thing that stands out most is his strength, his play strength. You know, he's a big guy that's explosive. Um, when you stand across from him and watch him come off the ball, uh, it's scary. So uh, it's good to get him in the mix now, and uh, you know, as Deshaun gets to know him more, there'll be a lot of production there. You have a couple guys that I think you're wanting to take leaps. Donovan Peoples-Jones, who's been very good each of the last two seasons, now in year three, and then Anthony Schwartz. We'll start with DPJ. How's he kind of fitting in and doing so far? Yeah, DPJ is always a pro. He does a great job. You know, he plays a lot of different spots for us. Uh, always consistent. You know, that's the big thing. He's, got, he's, he's played really well in this camp. Um, had some big catches for us. Uh, really excited where he is. Um, and then with Schwartzy, uh, here's a guy that's really starting to gain some confidence now. You can see it in his play on the field. He understands where he needs to be, catching the ball very well right now for us, so the arrow's up on both those guys. It feels like with Schwartz, too, like even from before you guys got into the OTAs when you were doing just offense on air to where he is now, there actually has been significant progress, which I'm sure you're excited about because he is the vertical guy in this offense. Right, no question. You think about these guys, a lot of these guys have not had this opportunity to go through a full OTA with the team setting, um, you know, for the, like the, the Bradleys and the, and the Schwartzes and Nick Harris's, those guys, these reps are invaluable for them. When you talk about David Bell, you guys are all excited. We know Coach was excited. That's as excited I've seen Kevin's fans to get about a player. How's he looked out here? And it feels like the, it's certainly this week, the last couple of days, he's made some big plays, especially in the red zone. He has, and it's all these rookies. You know, their heads are swimming right now. You're putting new plays in every single day. Uh, you can see a little bit in his game when he's not quite sure, um, you know, his route running ability. Sure. You know, but when he knows it, it's impressive. You know, he had a nice separation on a crossing route in practice. He's done some good things. So as he gains more confidence in himself in the system, we expect more production from him too. We've called it a passing camp. Mm -hmm. This is an offense that runs the ball quite a bit. We use some 12, some 13 personnel. We've seen some of that. We'll probably sure. be a little more 11 this year. But how do you kind of work on that at this time, or is that something that comes later on? That's we get off to the side. You know, we're not banging heads out here sure. with the defense, so we do it more of walkthrough settings versus our offensive offensive guys giving us a look on the other side. So um, I think we have four runs in a 10 play period. It's it's not a lot. Yeah, uh, that'll come at training camp. This offensive line, the depth seems to be very good. And getting a guy like Chris Hubbard back, and I know Conklin's on his way back. Uh, and we haven't had Joel here yet, but we've had guys. Blake Hans fills in, looks very, very good. What do you think about this line and how Nick Harris is adjusting to being that guy at center? No, I love our offensive line. Always have. They work hard, and it shows up for sure. Nick uh, is ready to step in. You know, he played well when he stepped in last year. We expect him to. To, to plug that hole from, from J.C. leaving uh, flawlessly. Uh, Jack getting Jack back, Hub back. I mean, that's a line that's played a lot of football together. Uh, and you can talk about Blake. He's played up and down the line in every position, so we feel really good about our depth. I will talk tight ends now and the Chief, the big news signs. He's been back the last two days. He's in great condition. He always is. 
How can he grow in this offense now that he's the man? Right. Now his big thing is just going to get more opportunities to make yeah. plays. That's the big thing for him. Uh, his targets will definitely go up for us, and we expect him to, to, to show up, which he will. He has already, so it's looked good. And we talked about using the middle of the field more, and that's oftentimes where the tight ends live and his ability to stretch the seam. And you go and you put on the tape of Deshaun, you see beautiful seam balls right. with tight ends that don't have the skills that the Chief does. So this could be a great marriage for him, the offense, the quarterback, and, and now the opportunity. Yeah, there's no question. You know, David's worked hard to get into this position where he's at, and we're happy that, uh, that we got him signed and he's back. How's Harrison Bryant doing now entering year three? Really good. He's a guy that understands our system. You know, there's nothing uh, – that he misses out there, you know, he's a he's like a coach on the field, and you know, he's another guy with with hoop leaving. His targets will go up, his production will go up this year. So we got guys. This is an offense, like we said, three tight ends off. And Miller Forsall looks like he's been that third guy so far, and it has looked pretty good. And then you've got some projects, mm -hmm. some some clay coming out of Texas Tech there that's pretty impressive and actually catches the ball. I think pretty naturally. What do you kind of make of the rest of that tight end room? And has anybody caught your eye? It's really a group of guys battling for spots. You know, if you get if you get down past Harrison. Yeah, you know, and David uh, Miller was here last year, sure. you know, but it's, it's definitely guys battling for the spot. They've all looked good and at times, you know, it's just going to be good competition moving into camp. The running back room, as we've talked about, not a ton of running here, some passing, but they all look good catching the ball. Kareem's had some nice catches, and I think Jerome Ford has looked real natural for a rookie. He has. You know, he's a guy that's, that's worked hard. Stump's doing a great job with him working on the side, but he's a guy that has a really good running uh, ability as well to catch the ball out of the backfield, so it'd be exciting to see him on third down. And we've seen Dimitri move back to the receivers. Is that just because we haven't had some guys available, or is that something that we're as, we're going to see as this offseason? Uh, a little bit of both. He's a, he's a utility knife for us. You know, one day you'll see him in the running back room, and if we're short at wide receiver, he goes out and plays wide receiver. But he's a guy that can do a lot of things for us. So as you sit here today, how do you feel about this offense, knowing that you have OTAs really for the first time we are able to really do this in, in your time here with the Browns? How do you feel about it, even though it is a whole new quarterback room, as you mentioned? Sure, I feel I'm very positive. You know, I, I like our group a lot. Um, adding Deshaun into the mix is, is, you know, an elite quarterback to come in and be your starter is excellent. Our running game has been as strong as anybody's in the league the last few years. So it's exciting times. So you got coming up, we've got the mandatory mini camp, then the break and training camp. What are you looking forward to about the mandatory mini camp? And then getting away, I'm sure, and kind of recharging yeah. the batteries. Yeah, the mandatory mini camp is just mandatory. You know, yeah. we've we've had a great attendance here. Hopefully, we we'll get yeah. Joel back in into the building next week and, and catch him up on some of the changes we've made. But uh, you know, looking forward for another two good weeks of work. Um, you know, cap it off with a good couple days of work during the mini camp, and then everybody needs to get back, refresh, relax, and then come back ready to go into that marathon of the season. If you could tell the fans one thing that when they come out to training camp, they should expect to see from this offense, what would it be? Hmm. A dynamic, uh, explosive offense. I think with the run game and, uh, and our uh, you know, emphasis on the drop back pass game, I think we can put some yards and some numbers up this year. That'll be a lot of fun. Coach, thanks so much for the time and enjoy the process. Will do. Thank you. All right, Browns fans, that'll do it for this edition of the best podcast available, or should I say Zagura and friends, because here I am once again. Now, of course, you can like and subscribe to the best podcast available wherever you get your podcasts, and be sure to check us out on the Browns YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Browns. For a couple of my friends, Jason Gibbs and Sir Andrew Gribble, I'm Nathan Zagura. Thanks for watching, and thanks for listening to the best podcast available presented by Cross Country Mortgage.